Hey everybody, Joe here. Nice that you could join me today. Thanks for coming. Okay, this is like the fourth and fifth time I've actually tried to record this uh, video. Um, <laughs> I thought I had everything in the can until I actually started to sit down and start doing the editing and I found out that the most important piece for number four episode number four which was the first one of my DIY shows which is what you're watching now had no audio duh okay well here we are a few days later it's cold as all get out outside and well, compared to what it was earlier this year, I'm, I'm sure not half as cold as what it's going to be later on this winter. But and I broke this out. Okay, don't shoot me. I love the Jets. I love the Giants. I didn't actually buy this. This was a Christmas gift many, 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 many years ago. I mean, this thing's like over 20 years old. So please don't shoot the wearer, okay? Um... The what you're going to be seeing here in this video today is the first of what is probably going to be three a series of three videos all on DIY the first video that you're going to see here today is the one that I screwed up earlier it is going to show you how to basically mix single flavor testers. Now single flavor testers are an extremely par important part of doing DIY because if you don't know how a particular flavor is going to react when you mix it, you can't develop your recipes okay and yes I refer to them as recipes because they're like the same kind of recipes that you use in the kitchen you add this and you add this and you add this and you come up with something else and in a way that's exactly how you approach doing DIY just like in a kitchen you have utensils that you're going to be using you have those utensils here in you know in doing DIY as well um, they're a little bit on the specialized side unless you happen to be into or know somebody who works for a laboratory or a doctor's office or something like that where they do measuring in metric as a part of their what they do you're gonna to have to go out and buy them they're not expensive um, a bag of a hundred one milliliter or one cc dispensing syringes seven bucks five fifty milliliter dispensing syringes five bucks yeah, they can get a little bit expensive, but they last you for a while. And, of course, three and five milliliter, which is what I use, uh, dispensing syringes. Some of Sometimes you can get them with the blunt needle tips on them. That also is a great thing if it's a little bit more expensive, like maybe a buck or so more expensive than the ones without them. Get the ones with the needle tips, okay? Believe me, you'll save money in the long run. So, having said all that, I don't want to make this too long. Well, it's only four minutes, but what I'm going to be showing you in the actual mixing here is going to take a while, and that could, that could last a while, so I'm going to try and keep this short. But like I said, basically we're going to be doing three shows here, back-to-back, -back, number four, number five, and number six on DIY. 
each one is going to be getting progressively a little bit more complicated. In other words, more flavors added to the mix. I'll show you in future shows what I use to compose my recipes, etc. So that way you can understand what's going on. But right now, this is going to be a, long, a relatively long show. Um, <clears throat> when I originally recorded this, it was before editing about 45 minutes. So hopefully I'll be able to edit this down this time with the audio and get it down to a point where it'll be tolerable. Okay. Uh, I'm really sorry about having such long videos, but I like to go into depth. I like to go into detail explaining exactly what I'm doing because some of these little gotchas that pop up in here, some of the little details turn into gotchas. And if you don't know them, you're going to wind up getting caught on them. I did, and that's the main reason why I'm getting in here and telling you about these things. So that way you don't get caught up on them like I did. Okay? Believe me, the barbed wire in the, in the tail section, it can hurt. Mm, if you get my drift. So, without further ado... I'm going to, oh, one before I do, all of the bottles that I'm using for this are 30 milliliter bottles. I'm going to be mixing up 10 milliliter um, testers. Unfortunately, I don't have 10 milliliter bottles that don't have things in them because well, this is what I was using when I turned around and, and did the other one. And, well, <laughs> I still got some in here. This is 3% um, at 6 milligrams per milliliter of flavoring. This is the blackberry. Some of these, like I said, I haven't gotten to test yet. Other ones I have. I'm going to go through them in short order. But... These are great to use in your tank or your dripper, but make sure you keep them out of the reach of children because they do not have a child safety cap on here. And this is what it would look like if it has a child safety cap. This is what it looks like without it. This kid can open up and they can start playing around with it and they can get very sick. So please, if you're going to be using this around kids, use one of these okay if you don't have to worry about having kids running around then you can you know have your stuff out and you know your wife isn't going to get it or you don't have cats or dogs who are going to get into it then you can by all means use one of these and these things are absolutely great okay so that's just a little tip a touch on safety one other thing before I go down in showing you how to um, start showing you how to do the actual mixing is I want to make a statement here about what you're going to be seeing and what you're going to be seeing in the rest of these videos one I normally do not I repeat do not mix here at my desk I usually mix in the kitchen I clean down the countertops thoroughly usually with a either an ammonia or a bleach solution usually a bleach solution make sure it's thoroughly cleaned make sure everything is a way that could possibly be contaminated by the amount of nick two the reason why I'm doing it here is because I have my camera and my computer here and I have everything set up to be able to easily film and it's a lot easier to move the stuff from the kitchen here for filming than it is to move the stuff that I use to film with to the kitchen. I'm lazy and it would be a major, major hassle. Okay? That's it. Three. Number three. Whenever you're dealing with nicotine, unless you're dealing with below 
25, 26 milligrams per milliliter. Make sure you are wearing gloves. If you're wearing, if you're using 36, 50, or 100 milligram, like I'll be using here today, you make sure you're wearing your gloves until it's mixed down to a safer quantity level. If you have or display any kind of a rash or anything like that while dealing with nicotine, even at the lower levels, make sure you wear gloves. Make sure you clean up thoroughly after yourself because don't forget you're where you normally are watching your computer or working on your computer. This will turn around and be in general area. Okay? So make sure you clean up after yourself. Okay? Having said that, I am going to chop out of here and we're going to start getting into actually uh, watching videos and how I'm doing things. Okay? I'll talk to you a little bit more at the end. Oh, and by the way, this is future Joe. Past Joe that actually did some of these other filming, uh, some of the other stuff that you're going to see in here in the future, that was, that was past Joe. So, okay. Let's actually get into the meat and potatoes of what we're going to be doing here. Let's go down below decks and see what's happening. Oh, by the way, before I forget, um, while I was film doing the filming for this, I got an email in from uh, Kimberly over at OS One Stop DIY Shop, um, basically asking uh, what I thought about the... Um, service I got on my last order, <clears throat> which is where I got all of these from. Well, let me put it to you this way. I used to get most of my um, flavorings from a lot of different places until I found OSDIY. Um, Kimberly and her crew over there have been probably the nicest people and the fastest shipping of anybody I've ever dealt with. Their prices are decent and I highly recommend them. Um, I'm not being paid for this in any way, shape, or form. Uh, Kimberly sends out an email every time she sends out an order about a week or so afterwards asking how you like the product. Well, this is my review as she requested, uh, except that instead of giving it in writing, I'm giving it in video. So let's go below. This. Okay, here's the first three characters that are going to be starring in our little play this afternoon. You have here on the left nicotine. This is 100 milligrams per milliliter suspended in a 100% vegetable glycerin base. It is a one liter bottle. I got that from uh, My Freedom Smokes. Uh, you can find them online. I'll have the URL in the description down below as to where you can find it. The next one in the center there is propylene glycol. USP kosher food grade one quart. Weight is 1,021 grams, just over a kilogram. That is from Essential Depot. You can find them either on Amazon or on their website that I will post in the description down below. Directly next to that on the far right is the vegetable glycerin, which is going to be making up the majority of our testers this afternoon. That is one quart VG vegetable glycerin, USP kosher food grade, non-GMO. It is one quart, 1,219 grams, just a little over a kilogram. I'll also have the direct link to that particular page for the VG in the descriptions below. And the only other thing that I don't have showing here is ethyl maltol, which is a sweetener, which we're not going to be using in our little testers for the simple reason we want to see what the actual flavor of the individual flavorings is. And we don't want it to be masked or changed in any way from actual flavor of the flavorings as it comes out of the bottle. 
So let's go on to the next one. Here you see the fourth and most important player in our juice that we're going to be making today. These are the individual flavors. Uh, these were purchased by me from One Stop DIY Shop. Uh, they're online. I'll have their uh, URL in the show notes down below as well. Uh, we have blackberry flavor, tobacco blend, blue raspberry uh, slush, strawberry milk flavoring, wild cherry licious, baked cinnamon roll, sweet southern tea, Arnold Palmer, and Lada Latte. Now in the original video that I shot of this, showing you how to make yourself up a uh, single flavor samplers. I originally made these at 3%. However, since I made them, I've had a chance to sample some of them after they've had a chance to steep for a while. And I found that the Latte Latte is pretty much the only one of the flavors that I've tested so far that actually is good at a 3% solution. However, it could be a little bit more, maybe 4%, give or take a little bit. So this one here, I'm going to try at the 5%, but I think the 3% is very good. The tobacco, the Arnold Palmer, the Sweet Southern Tea, they were all either just so light or practically non-existent. It was like vaping VG and PG with a little bit of nick in it and no flavorings at all. So we're going to be doing a complete remix today of this and hopefully this time I will be able to film the actual mixing and actually get the audio. Let's keep our fingers crossed here. But these are our players here today. So without further ado, let me introduce you to the other cast of characters in our little tableau. Okay, here we are with the other members of our cast of characters. These are the syringes. These are what I will be using to do the actual measurement of the VG, PG, nicotine, and flavoring as well for this recipe. In front of you here from left to right you will see a 1 cc or milliliter. For those of you who are not familiar with metric, 1 cubic centimeter is equivalent to 1 milliliter. Now this 1 cc syringe is graduated in 0.1 markings and it actually has much smaller markings on there. You really can't see it here. The light is really whiting it out. This is actually marked down to one hundredths of a cc. So you would have here between 0.5 and 0.6 milliliters or cc's. You would have 0.51, 0 0.52, 0 0.53, 0 0.54, 0 0.55, 0 0.56, 0 0.57, 0 0.58, 0 0.59, 0 0.6 milliliters. So you see it's actually in one one hundredths of a milliliter increments on this. Extremely fine graduations. The next one we have here is a three milliliter syringe that is in 0 0.1 milliliter increments. So you'll have 0.5 here and then you have 0.1 and you have the one milliliter increments there up to three milliliters capacity. This one is a 10 milliliter. The 10 milliliter is graduated in 0.2 milliliter graduations. So if you're measuring out a lot of stuff, that's really the one you want to use. But if you really want fine granular amounts you would use this here for the smaller amounts. Now this is the big boy. This is our 50 milliliter syringe. That is going to be used for measuring out our PG primarily and our VG when necessary because the VG is extremely viscous. We're not going to be using a needle on here. This is just going to go into a separate container which I use as a working bottle for the VG as well as the PG. And I'll be drawing this out of that as opposed to the main bottle you saw earlier. These here, this one and the 10 millimeter use what's called a lower lock tip. That's this little tip in the center here and this has this ring around here where the whoopsie, <laughs> sailors, um, where the syringe needle part goes onto the center post there and then twists and locks into place. Now these are great for working with something that's close to the viscosity of water. However, when you're dealing with something as extremely thick and syrupy as VG is, these things are practically useless. Since I'm holding this here already, let me show you what I got here. This is a 14 gauge dispensing syringe 
orange needle tip. It is not sharp. It is completely blunt, so it is perfectly legal to use. It is 14 gauge here on the inside. That's the hole you see in the center. And it is a standard Lauer Lock tip. This is a 16 gauge. Now, if you look very carefully here, you'll see that this is actually smaller than this. And you're saying, why is the number bigger? Well, the 16 that this is means that when you're using it with wire gauge, and this is important to remember, especially even when you're working on, if you decide to start doing rebuilding um, your own atomizers and start coiling atomizer coils. If something says that it's 16, that means that it was passed through a plate with a hole in it 16 times, gradually making the wire thinner. So when you get to something that is like 32 gauge, that is thinner than a 22 gauge by a considerable amount. Metric wire measurements are generally in the point XX millimeter size and generally refer to the exact cross-sectional diameter. Of. Suffice it to say, remember when somebody says, oh, I've got a 14 gauge and a 16 gauge. Well, the, six, the 14 gauge has a bigger hole in it and the 16 gauge has the smaller hole. Higher the number, smaller hole. Because, well, if this was a solid piece of wire, that means that this would have been put through a gauging 16 times, as opposed to this, which had only been put through 14 times. Each time making the wire progressively smaller. And the, six, the 14 here actually corresponds to the inside diameter here of this tube. Now that I've made that just about as clear as mud, let's go on to our next set of characters in our little play here. I want to introduce you to another type of syringe or measuring device that a lot of people use when they're DIYing. These are called pipettes. These are actually disposable. They're made of a soft, flexible plastic. They're graduated with different uh, size markings, 0 0.51, 1 1.52, 2.53 milliliters. You use this by squeezing the bulb end here, pushing the air out through the tip. You would then insert it into the bottle that has your liquid. You would then release the top here, drawing the liquid, the fluid up into the chamber, and you would stop when it gets to the markings, indicating how much you have. This here is a one milliliter pipette. You can see the markings on here, but I can barely make out what the markings are. That's one of my problems with these. First off, I've never been able to make use of them in a meaningful way because I've never been able to really read the measurements on here. These things are totally, totally crazy trying to trying to read them. Not only that, but I always wind up drawing either too little or too much of the fluid that I'm trying to I'm trying to measure out. And it always either goes above or it goes below. And they're, they're while they work nicely, they do have their functions and I keep them around because if I have to transfer fluid from one container to another, they work very well. But as a measuring device, not for this child. Okay, here we have a short display of some of the different types and styles of bottles that you can make use of uh, for holding your finished liquid. You have a small five, I forget if this is three or five milliliter size. I, I'm not sure. I only have one of these. This came as a tester that somebody sent me, and I think it's a five milliliter, but I'm not sure. This is 10 milliliters here. This is a 15 milliliter glass dripper bottle. I'm not going to move this around because as you can see, it has a juice in here and uh, does have a premium juice label and I'm not advertising for this particular company. And besides, I got it for free at a vape convention. So, um, you know, that's as far as it goes. Just using it to show you what the bottle looks like. It has the eyedropper in here. And as you can see from, maybe you can see inside there, you see the fluid being brought up inside. This is another one. This is a uh, high density polyethylene 30 milliliter dripper bottle. Has a childproof safety cap just as this little five milliliter has here. This one here next to it uses the exact same bottle except that it has a needle tip on here for applying your juice into those tight little areas like in tanks that are really really small. 
This is a 100 milliliter bottle here. I just recently got these. It is made of PET. Um, I haven't really made use of them yet. They hold and they work very well. They're designed for production use. As you can see here on the top, it has the ratcheting on here for uh, safe for tamper evident caps. And this is another one that I make use of, another color cap that I make use of. When you get them, the bottom rings are on there. You can see they are childproof safety caps. You can see the secondary cap inside. And so far they seem to be working well. Give me a while to find out how well they hold when I start trying to squeeze the last couple of milliliters or hundreds of a milliliter out of them and into my tanks and whether or not they crunkle, crinkle and crunch up and everything else or if they actually hold up. Check back with me in another couple of months. Okay, here we are. We're going to start doing mixing, but before I actually do anything, I want to show you what I'm going to be mixing things in, okay? This is the mixing container that I use. It comes from the Magic Bullet. This is what I use in the kitchen. Well, actually, my wife uses it in the kitchen. I use it sometimes, too. Um, it's an integral part of our kitchen equipment uh, and accessories, and it does an absolutely fantastic job of mixing up juice. Okay, uh, so you don't have to buy this if you don't want to, but I highly suggest it. And not only that, but you could also make use of this on a regular basis in the kitchen. It comes with a whole mess of other accessories, well, at least the one that we got uh, came with a whole mess of other accessories like a pitcher that you can actually use to um, make slushies and juices and strain out the juices, the whole nine yards. So now I what I use here is e-liquid calculator, no ads. Um, you'll you can find it on um, the Google Play Store. There's two types, one that has ads, one that has no ads. I cannot stand ads. This is not a very expensive app, and it works very, very well. It is well worth the 99 cents to $1.50, something like that, that it costs you to buy this app. Without further ado, let's start doing what we're going to be doing. First thing we're going to be doing is... What we're going to be doing is we're going to be making 90 milliliters of the base juice. Once the base juice, okay, is made, it's going to be split up amongst the amongst the tester bottles. And then once the tester bottles have been made, then I will be adding the individual flavors to the to each one of those bottles. It's easier to make up one big batch at 5%, excuse me, 6% nicotine, 5% flavor, and then just split it up than it is to turn around and make nine individual little recipes where everything can get totally screwed up. Okay? So having said that, let's get going. Now, nicotine-based liquid, 100 milligrams. 100% uh, VG, it says here that I need 5.40 milliliters of that juice. So I'm going to choose one of my 10 milliliter syringes, and I am going to tip this over, and without a syringe applicator tip on here, I am going to extract roughly 10 milliliters and then adjust down from there. Yeah, there we go. 5.4 milliliters. That goes directly in here. As you can see, that is thick as bloody syrup. And I have tried it with the 14 gauge applicator tips. I've tried it with 16. 16 is worse than 14. I have not been able to get my hands on uh, like 10, 12, or 8 gauge um, needle tips, needle application tips. 
Um, I just haven't. I know they're out there. I've seen them. I just have not been able to get my paws on them or get the time to go out and get my paws on them. Okay. Now, my VG and PG, I have already split up into what I call my working amounts. Okay. Mixing vessel. PG. All right. Let's close this up. Oh, we already got this open, so let's just do this here. Vegetable glycerin, 57.6 milliliters. 57.6. So we're going to need one of these. 50 milliliter. Fifty milliliters of pure vegetable glycerin, nothing in it, no nicotine, no nothing, just VG in here. Okay, go and move that over there. That's got the nickel in it. And put that there. So we have 50 on there, so we have to put 7.6 more nicotine, uh, excuse me, VG in here. So we're going to grab a 10 milliliter syringe, and we're going to put in the 7.6, 7.2, 7, 7.6 milliliters. Okay, now I'm going to hold this up here so you can see how I measured it, if it will focus in. Okay, you see the 7 line there? See the 7? Now, each one of these is 2 milliliter uh, increments, so that's 7.2, 7.4, 7.6. It's 7.6. So 7.6 is right there to where the black part of the stopper of the inside plunger is. So 57.6 milliliters of vegetable glycerin is now on board. Propylene glycol, that's the next. 22.50 milliliters. So put that on there. Move that over there, try and keep the mess down to a minimum here. Wow. Okay. And you start dropping everything as well. Okay. 22.5 milliliters. So, this PG is very close to water, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use this nice long... 16 gauge, 4 inch long extension on here, so that way I can get my stuff up without having to go tapping it all over the place and getting everything all over the place. Now that's 10 milliliters. And we put in another 10. That's 10, 2.50. What we're going to do is we're going to switch over to one of the 3 milliliter syringes. So we want 2.50. 2.50 on these 3 milliliter syringes. And you can see. Well, maybe you can't. Maybe you can and maybe you can't. Yeah, you can't see it on there. Sorry about that. But that's 2.5 milliliters in a 3 milliliter syringe. So that goes in. That goes there.
Okay. Having said all of that, what we're going to do now, since this is going to be mixed up into, there's going to be nine individual flavors here, what we're going to do is we're just going to put the mixing blade cover on here, make sure it's nice and fully sealed, and we're going to put this in here. Now, this is going to be loud, okay? So I'm going to turn off the video, at the, the audio at this point so I don't blow out your eardrums. Okay, here we go. Okay, we're back on audio. Now, this is just starting to feel a little bit warmish. I really don't need to beat the living crap out of this like I would normally do with the uh, my regular flavors for the simple reason I don't have the flavors mixed in here with it or in it with it. Excuse me. I don't have the flavors mixed in here. But as you can see, you see how that looks like lemon meringue in there, how it's mixed to frothy bubbles. Well, those bubbles go all the way through that juice. The air, ha air has been thoroughly incorporated. What I'm doing here is I'm just getting a couple of errant drops that are on the cover of the mixing blades. Waste not, want not. Um, the air is fully mixed in here. So when you, one of the things that, one of the two main key ingredients of steeping a juice is oxidation, primarily of the nicotine, helps to mellow it out, um, also helps to meld all the flavors and everything else together. Well, in this case, we're not trying to meld flavors together and have those flavor molecules, have new flavor molecules being made from the mixture of flavor molecules we're going to be putting in here because we're only going to be putting single flavors into each one of these, and we just want to see what the individual flavor of each one of these flavors come out, how it tastes, how it vapes. Okay, so this has just started to get a little bit warm, which means that the VG, the PG, and the nicotine are now thoroughly mixed together. I don't have to worry about the nicotine separating out. I don't have to worry about the PG or the VG separating out of suspension or anything like that. It's fully mixed. That's the whole idea behind this particular iteration okay if this was like I said if this was going to be another flavor it would be a different story the this thing would have gotten the living crap beat out of it in there and it would be nice and toasty warm because that would be that actually helps to do a pre steeping now to answer your questions before you start putting questions down in the thing about how I how did I come about this idea well I was watching a video on that Phil Bassardo had done with Jeremy Dollar down at his Good Life Vapor Shop down in uh, down in Georgia, and Jeremy took Phil into the mixing room and was showing him around, and he pointed to the base of these three big mixing these three big mixers. And said, this is how we mix the juice together and we pre-steep it in the process. At that second, I stopped the video. I rewound it and I played it again. And I did that at least three or four times. And a light bulb as bright as the sun in the middle of July or late July, early August went off in my head. And I'm like, holy crap. 
That's how he does it. I recognize the base of those uh, particular mixers. Okay, they are very, very expensive. They're American made mixers. Uh, their name begins with a V, and that's as all as far as I'm going to go because this isn't a paid advertisement for that company. But that company produces a mixer that when you use it at its highest blending settings, not only can you liquefy meat and just about everything else, but when you put something in there cold, it will actually cook it due to the friction of the blades inside the liquid that is being blended, which is exactly what we have here. The moderate amount of heat, the small amount of heat that's generated by this, by this liquid in here being swirled around by these blades produces just enough heat to start the steeping process. The air that's been incorporated into it by the little air bubbles in here it's going to help to oxidize the nicotine and reduce some of the harshness of the throat hit. Now, if you like a rip your throat, rip the back of your throat out throat hit, well, then you, my suggestion to you would be to simply and very, very simply, don't beat it quite so long. Of course, you'll need to let it steep longer before you get something uh, looking as pretty as that. This is actually the very first time I have ever had not enough juice in there. Wow. Okay. What I'm going to do is, is I have some of this left over from the previous mixing that I did. It's the same exact thing, six milliliters of, uh, six milligrams of nicotine per per milliliter same 70 30 VG to PG ratio so there we go Okay, now I may have to come in here and actually top these things off a little bit.
because it looks like for some reason, like I said, for the first time since I started mixing, I'm actually thinking that I am didn't make enough here. But, oops. Well, it, they all look to be filled to the same, roughly the same height. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Now that we have the base flavors, what I'm going to do is I am going to put in the flavors into each one of these as per the name on the bottle. Like it, 0.5 milliliters each bottle. So we got that off, and this is going to be 0.5 milliliters, or 5% of this 10 milliliters. So we put this in here, and we draw 0.5 milliliters of flavor. Just make sure I got 0.5 here. Point 0.5.
Okay, well, for the next hour or so, I'm going to be sitting here making believe like I'm playing maracas. Mmm. Oh, that's the smell of the Arnie on my on my gloves. Duh. Okay, so that's it. Those are the nine flavor testers that we're going to be trying out and vaping soon. I'm going to cut the camera here, and we're going to go back topside, and we're going to go FaceTime, and we're going to wrap this beastie up. Okay, here we are. We're back. Um, okay, that's pretty much it. Um, you've seen everything that there is to making up a single flavor tester. Uh, you can, by doing it this way, you can test out whatever flavors you want them to test out um, at whatever nicotine concentration, if you want to use a nicotine concentration, at whatever um, PG-VG ratio, whatever flavor ratio you want to go with. Um, there are a lot of people out there who are veteran DIYers who say that they, when they're doing a flavor test on something, they don't, um, they don't use nicotine in there. Well, I do. Not only to me, because I include the nicotine in there because I need the nicotine um, from my juice. And if I'm going to be vaping this, I might as well. Not only that, but I also find, and this is really the most important part, um, the most important part that I find is that the nicotine changes the flavor. I did make at one time a nick free 0% nick juice and I made the same exact flavor, same exact way with a what was it? Um, I think it was by that time I had adjusted up to like about six or seven percent uh, on the flavor. So I made one six or seven percent, whatever the flavor was, zero percent nick, and another one with the six percent nick that I normally use. And I tried both of the flavors, okay? And the flavor without the nicotine in it was very, very pure. It tasted like what the flavor of what I had put in there, which was a black cherry, tasted like. It's, it's what a black cherry would taste like. The problem is, is that when you added in nicotine, it changed the entire complexion of the flavor. It got a little bit... Well, not only was the throat hit there, but it also got a little bit too medicine-y. So when I put the nicotine, and the one that I had the nicotine in, I actually had to adjust the, the flavor concentration down a little bit so that way it wouldn't it wouldn't be such a medicine-y flavor. Um, it, it's hard to explain if you've never done it. Okay, and you've never been there, and you've never experienced it. Um, I can sit down and type my thoughts in very well. I have a really hard time sitting here talking to you guys like this face-to-face -face and explaining what I'm doing. What you're seeing here on YouTube is the final edit. You don't want to know what it was like in the raw film. Okay, trust me. Okay. So, having said all of this, um, I don't think there's anything more for me to, 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 to mention here. Um, pretty much that's it. Once you get through to this point and you got the cap on it, it's, it's done. Now you just uh, mix it up, shake it up, make sure the flavor is fully incorporated, and... Let it sit for a couple of hours until it 
see if it's to see if it starts changing color. Um, I know a lot of latte is going to change color. It's that's definitely going to change color. Let me see. Yeah. Yeah, that's already starting to change color a little bit in there. See it? It's not not the same clarity. See? That I think that's probably from the coffee. The fact that this the lot of latte is a coffee flavor. So I'm I'm really expecting a lot out of this thing. See how that comes out. Um all these flavors I really want to see because I really want to start being able to make a, a tea flavored. I'm a tea drinker, okay, and I I, I want to get a, a tea flavored, be able to make myself up a, a tea flavored um, vape. So I like coffee too, don't get me wrong, but I like my tea. Okay, let me get out of here, let you guys get out of here, go about what you're going to be doing. Talk to you later. Have a nice one. May the wind be at your back.